Welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing Stellar and the Stellar Consensus Protocol. Before we get started, please remember, if you enjoy this video and would like to see more like it, please remember to subscribe and like below. Now let's dive into Stellar. Stellar is an open source and decentralized financial platform. The native currency of the Stellar network is called Lumens. The abbreviation is XLM. The purpose of the Stellar network is to execute fast, secure, cross-border payments regardless of currency. Stellar began in 2014 when it forked from Ripple. The fork occurred because Jed McCaleb, original Ripple co-founder, had a differing financial philosophy and vision from other members of the Ripple team. The major difference between Stellar and Ripple is Ripple is focused on providing financial solutions to banks and other financial institutions. In addition to all that, Stellar also aims to provide a seamless platform for person-to-person -person value exchange. Initially, Stellar used the Ripple Consensus Protocol. A hard fork in the Stellar network gave the team an opportunity to launch their own proprietary consensus protocol. This protocol is known as the Stellar Consensus Protocol, or SCP for short. After introducing the new protocol, the Stellar Development Foundation also created a new consensus algorithm. The algorithm is known as Federated Byzantine Agreement, or FBA. The code and white paper for the new algorithm were released in April of 2015. A good way to start to understand Federated Byzantine Agreement is to see how it compares with the other protocols, Proof of Work and Byzantine Fault Tolerance. First, let's look at open versus closed membership. This can also be thought of as who is allowed to participate in the consensus process. In Proof of Work, anyone can be a miner and participate in the consensus process. Miners can also come and go as they please from the network. This has no effect on the consensus. You can think of them like Uber drivers. They log in when they want to make some extra cash, and when they log out, riders can still get rides from other drivers. In a Byzantine fault-tolerant environment, there is a recommended validator list. This list is usually defined by a central authority or a constitution that governs the system. Technically, anyone can become a validator, but you can only contribute to the consensus if you are chosen by the central authority. Validator election is handled differently depending on the protocol. It is usually done in a democratic way amongst holders of the currency. With Federated Byzantine Agreement, there is no recommended validator list. Instead, each validator is responsible to establish which other validators they trust. Their list of trusted validators becomes known as their quorum slice. The quorum slices of each validator will begin to overlap with one another, and this creates what is known as a quorum. In FBA, a quorum is effectively a network-wide consensus on a transaction. I hope you have enjoyed this brief introduction into the Stellar Consensus Protocol. To learn more about Federated Byzantine Agreement, please visit achainofblocks.com. And remember, please comment below to let me know what the next topic should be.